Hey everyone, wanted to do a video on anatomical movements so that we can put terms to some of the movements that you guys use on a regular basis. And by having standardized terms, that allows us to talk about it a little bit more efficiently regarding exercises or lifts and also uh, concerning different types of injuries. So we're going to move from the head all the way down to the feet and talk about the different movements that's possible in your body. Uh, we'll first start with the neck uh, and you have uh, flexion of the neck by just dropping the chin and this puts the uh, cervical spine in flexion and then you have extension which is just the cervical spine extending. You also have cervical rotation just looking left and right and you have lateral flexion. Okay, now we're moving into the trunk and you have elevation of the ribs and then depression of the ribs. It's not really a big one, but it can play a part in uh, some types of injuries, particularly in the thoracic area in the back. Um, <clears throat> you, can have, you can have thoracic flexion and you can have thoracic extension. This position, by the way, with the chest lifted up, is a position that you should be in pretty much every uh, major compound lift, specifically the squat, the deadlift, and the press. So, if you're not doing this in all of your squats, then that's incorrect. Uh, the lumbar spine, this area down here, can be in flexion, which is what, uh, a lot of positions that people will get in in the deadlift, which is not good. And then you can have that in extension, which is uh, another problem which, with overextension uh, and can cause some problems, especially with females. Also in the trunk, you have rotation of the spine. Just uh, rotation while my hips are squared to you. And then we have lateral flexion. Something that's not utilized a whole lot in lifting, but important nonetheless. Now we're going to move into the shoulder and arm. And the first part of the shoulder that originates from the torso is the scapula. It's uh, just your shoulder blade. It sits on uh, the back of your rib cage right here. And it has some movement, even though it's not, it doesn't really have a bony connection to the torso. There's, it's like in a sheath of muscles. So we have uh, elevation of the scapula where they just, they just translate straight up. They translate straight up. Uh, we can have depression where they go straight down and they just slide down. You can have upward rotation, which would look like that, where it kind of does, it rotates in. And you can have downward rotation. Think about holding something heavy and letting your arm go slack. That would be downward rotation, and then if you're trying to hold it up like this, that's upward rotation. Uh, the same thing happens at the top of a press, where if you shrug really hard, then you'll have a little bit of upward rotation in the scapula. Uh, you can also have protraction and retraction in the scapula. So retraction would be when they're pinched together, and protraction would be when they're pulled apart. So in the bench press, you would want retraction of the scapula in order to pinch your shoulder blades together, and then thoracic extension, um, yes, thoracic extension in order to pull your chest up and have this nice uh, solidified position to bench from. Now moving into the shoulder itself, when the, sh when the shoulder moves into the frontal plane, this is shoulder flexion. We're only looking at this joint right here now. This is shoulder extension. These are uh, two of the most uh, commonly used forms of uh, movement, so uh, take note of these. Uh, we also have uh, just abduction, abduction, in which the shoulder moves away from the midline, and then adduction, ad, as in dingleberry, moving towards the midline. You can think of it as adding it to the middle, and then ab would be the opposite of that. Hey! The dogs are playing. Uh, so, you also have horizontal abduction going away, and horizontal abduction coming in. Uh, <clears throat> there's also external rotation, which is easily shown when the uh, forearm is in line with the bicep, but external rotation when it moves away. It can also be called lateral rotation, but external rotation makes most sense. And then internal rotation where the front of the humerus is now rotating inward. And these are important in different types of pressing as well as mobility. So external rotation, internal rotation. Moving down from the shoulder, there is the elbow. The elbow is just a hinge joint, so it primarily has flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. Pretty simple. Um, the wrist has, and remember, anatomical position is with palms up. 
palms up and feet facing forward with everything facing forward. This is anatomical position, so we all the positions occur from this point. So this is flexion of the wrist and this is extension of the wrist. You also have supination in the forearm, which is where I'm at now in a normal anatomical position, and then pronation. An easy way to think of that is bowl of soup, supination, prone to drop it, pronation. Uh, then, of course, there's some, we can think of this as medial and, right, and lateral deviation of the wrist in which, it, uh, in which it does this, but it's easy to think of it as radial and ulnar because the radius is the thumb side, so radial deviation and then ulnar deviation. Kind of makes it easier because depending on if it's pronate or supinated, it, uh, it's hard to, oh, medial, lateral, I don't know which one. So uh, radial to the thumb side, which is where the radius is along right here, and the ulna, which is the longer bone here. We're going to keep moving on down from the trunk into the hip region, and if the dogs will stop walking in my way, we're going to keep moving from the trunk down to the hip region and talk about the hips. Uh, the hip movements are very similar to the shoulder movements. Uh, when you have uh, the hip moving in the frontal plane like so, that is hip flexion. When it goes behind you, that is hip extension. Those are two important movements in the hip as just as they are in the shoulder because they happen so frequently, whether it's with squatting or any kind of deadlift or any kind of jumping or actual running. So uh, hip flexion and extension. Notice that it doesn't matter where my knee is. It doesn't matter where I start either. Look, I'm in this position and then I've just flexed my hip. I'm in this position, I've just extended it. Extension, extension. Uh, this could be considered hyperextension back here, but we're not worried about that. Uh, when the hip moves away from the midline, like so, that is a abduction with a B. And when it moves towards the middle, that is adduction, adding it to the middle. Uh, you can have medial and external rotation of the hip, just as you can with the shoulder. Um, that can also be from this position. You can have external rotation with a flexed hip. And that's important because when we're squatting like this and we shove our knees out, that's external rotation in the hip along with flexion. So that, that is also important for mobility. Um, now moving down to the knee. The knee is just a hinge joint, so all it really does is flex and extend. It can happen from up here. Right now my, my hip is flexed and my knee is flexed. I've just extended my knee. The knee also has a little bit of assistance in ro uh, rotation of the knee, but the knee has to be flexed. So uh, let's see, I'm trying to get a, so this right here, that is like, uh, that's internal rotation or medial rotation of the knee, and this is external rotation, but obviously it's kind of integrated with the thigh. But the main thing with the, with the knee is obviously flexion and extension. Uh, now we're gonna move into the ankle, which has a, a variety of of movements, we're going to focus on these two, which is plantar flexion, which is typically associated with the calves uh, actually applying force. Plantar flexion, you can think of it as you're, you're planting your toes and then applying force. And then dorsiflexion, in which the toes are pulled up. So plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. And right now, my hip is in flexion and my knee's in flexion. Uh, we also have, we also have inversion, in which uh, the ankle rotates, uh, not necessarily rotate, but it moves uh, medial, and then eversion in which it moves out. So typically when you have a sprain, it's an inversion sprain when you roll on the outside of your foot and the bottom of your foot looks inward. There's also some other ones of pronation internal, or pronation and supination with the ankle, but we're not really worried about that. Now that you have an understanding of the anatomical movements, keep in mind that the reason these movements occur are because there are muscles attaching to two different bones that are shortening to bring those two points together. So in the case, it's very easy to look at the bicep, which is the muscles, the biceps brachii, the muscles that are here, because they are attached on the forearm, which is just, you know, the combination of the radius and the ulna, and on the humerus. So when they shorten, their muscle fibers shorten, it decreases the angle between the forearm and the humerus. So it makes sense that, the, that this occurs. It shortens and causes this motion to occur. So keep in mind that in order to get all these movements, any kind of movement in the body, 
it's all because that there's a muscle or a collection of muscles that are attaching between two points on the bone and they are shortening in order to make that occur. And that concept should remind you or help you understand why certain lifts are helpful, why, you, why they help you get stronger, why they may hurt after you injure them, or how you can rehab certain things once you are hurt.